Compliance Maps is ACL's path to better compliance management. There are four key challenges we found that organizations face and are focused on improving. The first challenge is managing compliance content such as industry standards and regulations. Uh, the second challenge is to avoid being operationally strangled by the thousands of requirements that are contained within those industry standards and regulations. How do you manage a, a backlog like that? The third is to connect requirements with internal key controls uh, that are stored within your frameworks and provide an aggregated view of activity uh, across projects. Finally, uh, we wanted to provide a scorecard to management and the board so that they can understand your compliance posture. Today, we'll talk through an example of a common industry standard to show you how you can overcome each of these challenges to optimize your compliance management program, deliver impact and value. Let's use an IT industry standard, COBIT, as our Harbor Tour example today. Source content can come from a number of regulatory authorities in a number of verticals and can be described differently from case to case. So you can manage any industry standard or regulation, whether it's publicly available or via an internal policy you create, uh, just using a managed standards uh, regulations interface here. So I can see very easily that these are all of the standards and regs that I have loaded. Uh, some of these come from the ACL content library, which you can acquire quite easily. Um, and some of these are user created that I've made myself. So content is complex. It, it comes as a jungle of nested hierarchies. Uh, you'll see in each of these examples, the hierarchy goes uh, quite deep, you know, two to three levels and beyond. To help you manage that, Compliance Maps lets you choose uh, at what level of any given standard you want to demonstrate compliance. The interpretation of the requirement is also key here. So looking at any, requir any requirement detail, we've laid this out in a kind of a logical format so that you would interpret the requirement first, looking at the title, the description, what actually is it before you move on to the rationalization. So how do we avoid that strangulation we talked about earlier, all these different requirements competing for your attention? So rationalization to us is a risk-based approach to determine which requirements are material to your organization and which are not. So to do this, we must first interpret the requirement and decide uh, whether we want to rationalize it away or not. So take, for example, the one I have open right now, uh, COBIT's API 004. It's a standard on innovation and it states that we want to assess the potential of emerging technologies and innovation ideas. So the question is, what if my IT department relies on third-party services for most of its IT needs? The answer in this case would be this, this requirement is not applicable. So I can just mark it not applicable. And this is a simple box checking exercise. What I can also do is um, provide a rationale. So why did I do this? So I can say that company ABC um, uses a third party for its IT activities. And there I have my rationale and I can move on to the next requirement. So what you'll also notice is now that I've marked this not applicable, it's something that we don't need to uh, address. So it will come out of this list. You'll see as soon as I click done, um, API 04 is now gone. It now lives in the not applicable uh, bucket, which we'll, we'll cover in a little bit. So out of thousands of requirements, only one's material to your business should be applicable. And within that subset, you can then uh, determine which you deem covered. And this is another way to rationalize. So if I take a look at AP, AP 08 manage relationships, you'll see our default state here is applicable yes and covered no. So in compliance maps, uh, covered status is described as the indication that the requirement is met. That means yes, it's applicable to us and yes, we are compliant. And here's our rationale for that as we're entered in the rationale field. So for managing the relationships, I can say it's covered. I can also provide uh, my rationale, which I'll be a little bit more uh, vague with, just for the interest of time. I'll click save. And now this requirement is known, known as covered. So when I'm done, you'll see my coverage here change from 0% to 100% on the requirement that I've just changed. This documentation of rationale will remove friction with regulators as they can easily see it in the system and they can see it in the related reports you generate. So notice when I click in, I can see my rationalization such as I've entered it in, a, in, in an easy to see way. So rationalization also allows you to maintain operational agility and comply with requirements that matter to your organization. You know, we let you pick what really matters at what level and set your status, rationalize it away and make it really easy to check that box.
So next we want to talk about mapping requirements to controls. We spoke about that in the mapping foundational step of our introduction. And we want to go through how you would map framework controls uh, to a requirement and you know, demonstrate, your, um, demonstrate your compliance at that level. Visual mapping from the source requirement to your key control framework is really easy. It's really scalable. So we can just map a control. I'm going to pick APO 13. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to see, yes, we've, just, we've determined it as covered uh, in an earlier exercise, but there's no controls mapped yet. So I want to map some controls to this. So I'll click the map controls button. I'll show the frameworks that I have configured for my organization. Now, a framework is a central repository for key controls that can be used across projects. So these key controls that I'm showing here are stored in the framework and used and referenced in multiple projects where testing occurs. And the testing metadata from those projects is aggregated and displayed in compliance maps once the mapping is created. So let's pick that. Now you can see I've picked it just to map. The selected control is mapped to the requirement and it's as simple as that. So you see now under map controls, we have a little bit of uh, information about what control it is and we have its current status. So we have, like I said before, the aggregation of the testing metadata and in some cases the issues will be all aggregated here and uh, ready for you to look through and you know, get, get a little bit more information on. Control weight is also calculated or also manually set here uh, to let you deem how much of uh, how much weight this control has against the requirement. The default's 100%, but I can set it to 50, and we will show you how the aggregation works. So you can see it's covered at 100% because I've marked it covered, and we have an assurance score of 50%. So these these test scores, these assurance scores, are aggregated up to the top of the standard. So lastly, we want to provide your management and board with a scorecard that informs them of your global compliance posture. So Compliance Maps provides at-a-glance aggregation of all coverage and assurance scores, so it gives them a sense of how well you're covered. So every time you come into Compliance Maps in its default state, you can see we have a coverage, covered issues, and assurance roll-up per standard. And that's an at, at a glance, it's very easy to see what your current status is on that standard. You can also generate a compliance summary report to provide a full view of your compliance posture. So up here we have a button uh, to let you download a compliance summary report. It's very easy, it's a, it's a Excel spreadsheet that shows the entire standard, whether it's not applicable, covered, rationalized away, um, anything that we've talked about in our in our demo here, you can see has a field. There's assurance scores if we have controls mapped. It's really easy to provide a regulator or your board or your management um, a, a clear picture of your current compliance status. You can also see uh, across the bottom of this spreadsheet, we have each standard that we have loaded available as a different sheet. And you can reduce this down to one or two sheets or, or show the whole thing. Also, coming back into compliance maps, um, we have a couple of really powerful tools to let you filter and sort and search requirements. So you can filter out any, any standard you'd like. So if I only want to look at COBIT, I can look at just COBIT. Um, I can look at everything very easily. I can filter uh, across those statuses we talked about. So applicable is the default, anything that's applicable to my organization, that's what we show immediately. Gaps, anything that has been not marked as covered in the status, so those are uh, coverage gaps that we have. Coverage, anything that's been marked covered in that status we talked about, and not applicable, which are the, the, the requirements that we've deemed not applicable. Searching is really fun, we can just kind of type in manage and you'll see that we get back uh, results highlighted with the search term uh, contained if the search term is contained in the title. If the search term is contained somewhere else in the requirement, we just surface the requirement and let you click through to it and have a look. So there you have it. These are ACL's foundational steps to compliance management. <music>